and then and then claiming to buy the land back from the people that the pulp came from if people ain't caught on yet it's like somebody coming in your land your inheritance taking a bucket of taking a bucket of water out your stream inherited from your forefathers putting it in a bottle then selling it back to you for an exorbitant price and then taking your land saying that you can't afford it, the taxes and so therefore you're taking the land and they got the stream from which the water comes and this is what they've been doing to our people for generations likewise they've been doing it with fiat called federal reserve Note, which is private commercial paper and not money however people are waking up Um, oh, here's a question. Um, I, um, uh, Asa Seymour Bay, IRS sent me a letter saying I owe eleven thousand dollars, eleven thousand in taxes. Do I send a co warrant to as a rebuttal? Exactly, all the time. Matter of fact, in the future, let's talk about that. So you can put that on the list of, a, of restoration again. But these are stuff we've been talking about for years. This is why I say, you know, this stuff is, is redundant. However, because many people are being attacked. But I, would, I would want to say this to everyone. Uh, the members of the IRS, whenever you're talking uh, to anyone who sends you any communication, always within your core warrant ask uh, the response of a living man or woman who wrote the designation to you because the IRS is a private foreign corporation which is bankrupt and dead, etc., and you can't speak to it and it can't speak to you. So find a man or woman who claims to have a claim against your estate and communicate from that point of view, even when you're doing the co-warranto, etc. Oh, here's a question. Okay, it was here. Tracy Hopeland Bay asks, um, what do you think about adverse possession? Adverse possession is a system that has been used by the um, members of the Roman Curia who have been running these banks for the members of John 844 who are the uh, head Curia members who actually own the United States Corporation Company. And this is why whenever you see an adverse possession or adverse claim being made by uh, persons of banks, etc., you'll always see them designate or paste on the windows or the walls of the properties uh, that are uh, designated as lots. You'll see them uh, put a, a, a notice of, quote unquote, abandonment. So everyone look up abandonment, abandonment in your law dictionaries, etc. And whenever they do a foreclosure on a dead pledge, which a mortgage is a dead pledge, etc., misrepresented, as you ought to know, because most people don't know that, you'll see foreclosures. So how can you have a foreclosure when you were invited to a closure? So how can a contract be closed how can you go to a closure and then thereafter come to a foreclosure because the foreclosure was done before the closure and it wasn't designated to you because you were designated as a sharecropper or an tenant to the place etc and they already know that that the people who thought they were buying a uh, property were never uh, designated as owners, etc. They're designated as tenants. And of course, they do what you call a seal of ab abandonment, and it goes unchallenged. The other thing that I want to mention in place of that is you notice uh, as people have become aware of what they were doing to them, to the general public, uh, that they started uh, using the uh, adverse possession uh, operations too. And you would see that 
the hybrid the hybrid European crown members would attack them under the guise that they were squatting or violating law and it's mainly because uh, they don't want you to do what they've been doing now from a principle of operations that is absolutely correct from a principle of operations that is legal however most of the time they will attack the people because they themselves are corrupt and they set that system up for themselves and not for the people however i would um take always the position whatever position that you take always put it in trust and always make an aboriginal adverse claim distinguished from the ordinary corporate uh, adverse claim of commercial operations make those distinction though your operations may be similar the status behind it is really what i'm implying it's a good question because i said so how does a woman who was quote unquote married nationalized when her quote unquote husband does not have motivation for this awakening but does oppose her awakening herself Keep in mind, a marriage a marriage license is a uh, bottomry instrument, and the first um, the first claimant or the right of claim is the corporate state. You are considered in law as two ships passing in the night. Therefore, your that marriage uh, certificate is actually a bottomry instrument. is not honorable in the first instance. Number two. Um, the, the uh, with the marriage certificate uh, the corporate state on behalf of the popes of Rome and the bishopric claim all the eggs in your womb and all hereditaments too also keep that in mind uh, and uh, so do a little research on the Christian black codes and you'll see that the condition of the mother is the condition of the child and also uh, it's a matter of trade and having nothing to do with the divine union of man and woman. Those things must be taken in consideration uh, at all times, particularly when you come to the point of you becoming conscious. I think it would be well if you shared with your husband the real meaning uh, in history and the actual legal designation of marriage, not by opinion, but do some research and then talk to him again about or his position inform him rather than just look at it from a moral and ethical point of view which he probably is not looking at he's probably looking at it from a perspective that you're believing something not knowing that you know something and keep in mind belief and knowledge knowledge are two different two different issues belong on two different tables on two different venues but isn't it true though that even if someone objects to another another um individual nationalizing they can do it anyway because that's sure that doesn't stop you that's what she's saying yeah, how can you do it if the, if your spouse uh, doesn't want you to you do it because you do it in other words the deal of it is are you a serf or are you free woman the, the problem that we have is is a lot of times see it, it's sort of like um this is the unfortunate thing that has happened with many is that um, people know that when people become conscious, we you know that slave, the word slave is used connotatively. But in the connotative uh, sense, when you become conscious, people can't hold you to slave rules. And keep in mind when you become conscious, it makes people nervous who are actually holding you to both economic, social, and emotional slavery and they're threatened by that which is again why a lot of people don't go along with you waking up don't think every action or response that people have is based in love it's not necessarily and you don't need permission you don't need permission to be free or what you call sovereign that's divine that's not an application that's divine and it's back to the principles of right of inheritance that you'll see in all uh, holy books and in African culture where it says, honor your mothers and fathers that your days may be longer upon the earth land, L-A-N-D. It's dealing with the physical world. It actually is. But the choice is also yours. And also the book says, if your right arm offend you, cut it off. 
but I wouldn't I wouldn't present that as an argument myself. But you must you must look at all of these things because in the real world, keep in mind, our time of traveling with people are limited. And if people don't have your best interest in heart, you don't, can't call it love. So you gotta consider what you have vested in, in the situation. Don't think that they're not thinking that way either. Because most of the time when you're when you're you're presenting an issue that is provably and obviously correct and right, and someone goes against it, you have to really not get angry, but intelligently start analyzing what's actually going on and have an intelligent conversation in that area. Because it will definitely come up as a problem later. Because, you know, it's sort of like um, some people who don't have the courage to walk through the door of liberty also don't want their mates to be liberated. You got to remember, slaves don't like free people. Try nine. And slave makers don't like free people. Mm. Or free thinkers. This is why you see uh, so much uh, effort also coming from uh, owners of the Roman Curia misrepresenting the word sovereignty. Every time you hear them talk about it, it's always a negative. That's why. Because all their bonds are based in stealing your divine sovereignty, which is birthright. All the U.S. Treasury bonds are best, based in the theft of your birthright. And birthright and sovereignty are harmonic. Also, unalienable rights are harmonic. Privileges don't belong on that table. That's why this information upsets people who have been using people, people who are narcissistic, who are users, don't like people to get this information because they also can't use you anymore. Because a lot of people that pretend to like you only around you before they can get out of you. And you'll notice that most of the trolls who are who are trolling and condemning this information are people who are usually trying to get your finance but actually produce nothing for the masses at all. Almost everything they do is from a, a narcissistic perspective is taking from people, whether it's donations, finance, support, tithe, taxes, but give you absolutely nothing. And when you get wise to them, in their narcissistic, selfish, two-faced ways, they get angry at you because they can't use you. You got to look at all of these dynamics that you're dealing with. And those things are being made manifest by the day, particularly now because pressures are being placed on all institutions set up by the dark priesthood. They're collapsing and it's exposing everybody and their roles wherever we are along the path the wool is being pulled off. This is why I was talking about last year and the year before, all masks are off. What I was talking about then is for you to look at what's going on now. And keep in mind, person and personality means mask. Okay. Here's, here's a comment question from Sean Bay 9 Is it safe to conclude that all information dispensed on MSL, mainstream media, and throughout social media algorithms are diversions to the truth slash light that is occurring. That's why you see all of um, so much of what you call censoring, so much of blocking uh, people's uh, um, um, efforts for uh, transferring information, uh, interference, uh, stealing of people's uh, compensations on their different uh, websites, etc. That's why you see it. That's the workings of the dark priesthood. Absolutely. Who you thought were your so-called public servants. No, they are parasites. And then, of course, those among your own who've been around you, who you thought were talking good on um, our people stuff, um, you're starting to discover that most many of them are parasites, too. And always have been. However, a lot of them get upset because when you, as you're exposing 
Romans, the Roman systems and their agencies and agents, etc. It exposes those people who have been handled by them that have been comfortably hanging around you. You'll see that they actually produce very little to nothing, but they're good at sucking finance and energy from others. Oh, uh, well, she just gave, gave a correction. She said, he. she wrote it wrong, he does not oppose, sorry. So he doesn't, he's not interested apparently in it for himself, but he does not oppose. So again, you just do it, you do it. You oppose do it. is what it is, it speaks for itself. Well, she said he does, because she said he opposes, but I guess she wrote it wrong. But then she's correcting. He does words, not if something oppose. is if something is directed towards that which is right, that which is proper, that which is good, and someone opposes it, it's just what it is. But he does always designate things for what they absolutely are. Yeah. We got to start looking at things for what they are, not necessarily get angry, but don't don't qualify wrong or so or how do you say? See, some people in their heart are people who love people being in servitude. But that's the truth. Grand Sheik, I'm, I'm correcting it. She corrected herself. He does not oppose her, her nationalizing. He just doesn't have any interest in it for himself. So she that's fine. Right. You know, again, in other words, like this. This is what I suggest to you. Read the Christian Black Codes of 1724. That's available to you even on the internet. And start reading it and then looking at uh, some of your questions that you've asked and then look at some of the questions that you haven't asked then present that to him and then have your discussion all over again and see where you stand because if you think for one minute that the hybrids are not paying attention to our activities and your thoughts oh uh, I think you should think again because they certainly are because they live off of you and while he's being silent, they're still living off of him. You know, like people say they don't want to rock the boat. The boat's rocked. A couple questions I'm going to get in. Sure. Um, this is uh, from Bridge REH. Do Moors need to have wills? Uh, a trust is in the nature of a will. But it should be private and in your trust, yes, you should have uh, wills. Yes. In the trust. But the trust in its nature is a will. So look at the will and trust together. Here's another question. Can as diamonds for all those devils, can a single mother put her children in or under a trust to have legal ownership and keep them out of the system? Conditions of the mother's condition of the child. Can't state it enough. She says to keep them out of the system and to put, it, to put them literally name them in the trust. The mother is the condition of the child. Can't emphasize it enough. So is that yes? You see the deal with what I'm saying? What I This is what I pre prefer to do a lot of times when I'm answering questions. I, I try to direct people to establish law and establish facts so that they don't assume that it's just merely my opinion. And I direct you to do a little bit of research so you recognize majorly that most of our problems and your problems have been created by and originating from people you have falsely trusted and naively trusted. Those people are, in fact, preachers and politicians who are in bed together, always had been, and they are the constructors of the political operations across the world and have been the originators of most of the political, economic war and biological warfare, sterilization program and virus programs that have suffered and have been pushed upon humanity. These people who you have never suspected standing behind the pool pits and the rostrums of the politicians. They are partners. And that's not opinion. Do a little research, and as you find it out, you start doing what? If your right arm offend you, cut it off. It's uncomfortable, but that's the reality. 
because they have been the major ones behind the mini the minutio maxima stealing the people's status period i think people also you should uh, look up status in the law book and read it absolute and then read a state and read it absolute and put it together write it down and read it every day it will give you good guidance it will answer a lot of questions that people have and a lot of answer a lot of questions that people should have asked and never thought to ask okay here's a question that's so let's same thing from Violet Swan. I'm national I am nationalizing now. My husband is not. Now does that mean marriage license is null and void? It see it's not that the marriage license was null and void. The marriage license was never honorable in the first place. It had nothing to do with you, had nothing to do with him. I suggest, and as a matter of fact, in the future, I'm going to share with you here at the House of Reawakening Minds the truth of the history and the instrumentality of what a marriage license is, not by my opinion, but by fact. And if any of you all maintain a marriage license after that, keep in mind, you did it to yourself voluntarily, although you didn't know what you had. Marriage licenses are not divine. That's number one. Marriage license does not come from the creator or truth of African culture. Marriage license comes from the Pope of Rome for ownership, for human trafficking, and the offspring of sows, cow, 